My name is Neil and I have been a self-employed architect in the UK since 2009. I specialise in altering and extending private homes and two things happened recently which caused my clients to ask about the cost difference between electric heating and gas-fired boilers. 1. The cost of energy has been going up in the UK. 2. The long-term future of natural gas boilers is being questioned. The UK has a comprehensive natural gas network. 86% of homes in this country use natural gas for heating. The UK also generates over 40% of its electricity from natural gas. So the price of gas determines the cost of heating and powering people's homes. The cost of gas and electricity rise and fall in tandem, and the cost has risen in 2021 by a lot. While the price of fossil fuels have always gone up and down over time, the general public have also become aware of the impact of climate change on government policy. The recent UK government plan to support air source heat pumps is one example, and it has made several of my clients wonder whether they will be forced to change their gas-fired boilers in the near future. I don't think so. There are too many existing homes in the UK, and it makes more sense to phase boilers out rather than ban them in one go. We could argue over what might replace gas-fired boilers in the UK, but the most obvious way to heat a building sustainably is with electricity made from renewable sources. At present, about 40% of the UK's electricity is made from renewables, and that percentage grows every year. So how do you heat a building efficiently using electricity, and what will it cost? First off, the most effective way to heat any building is by using underfloor heating. This is a relatively new technology. When central heating first emerged, it was more usual to fit radiators in every room and supply those radiators using pipes. This is still widely done, but it has two big drawbacks. First, the radiator is localised. The heat it produces doesn't always circulate efficiently. Second, the pipes taking hot water to the radiators themselves lose heat the further they get from the boiler. This isn't always a bad thing, as the heat they lose goes into the building anyway, but it does cause the radiator to take longer to get hot, and it takes more energy to keep it hot to compensate for losing heat along the pipe. Underfloor heating is more efficient than radiators, because the heat is more evenly distributed throughout a room. If you haven't seen a wet underfloor system installation, it looks like a hose coiled in a regular pattern over insulation. It then has about 60 to 70 millimeters of concrete screed poured over it. This brings us to electric underfloor heating. These systems have been around for a while. They began as a way to heat floor tiles in luxury bathrooms, but now people are looking at how to use them to heat entire buildings. They are usually sold as mats or boards with heating elements running in them. Electric systems are usually installed on top of a floor and then have tiles laid over them, but other flooring finishes can also be used. Let's leave aside the practical issues and the cost of installation just now and focus solely on the running cost of these two systems. Let's assume we have a simple four-bed, one-storey house with a solid concrete floor. The house is 129 square metres and has 23 square metres of windows and external doors and is built from well-insulated timber frame construction. To work out how much energy is required to heat this building, we must do a BTU calculation. BTUs, or British Thermal Units, are the standard output measurement for all heating appliances in the UK. If you're more familiar with watts, 1 watt equals 3.41 BTU. Once you know how many BTUs, or watts, your home needs, you can correctly specify the heating system. This house needs 20,000 BTU, or just under 6,000 watts, to adequately heat it. Let's look at the difference in running costs between wet underfloor heating, run from a gas-fired boiler, compared with an electric underfloor heating system. Typical electric underfloor heating mats output 150 to 200 watts per square metre. Therefore, we only need to fit 40 square metres of electric underfloor heating. This would generate 6,000 to 8,000 watts of heat, more than enough to comfortably heat the house. Assuming the electric system is 100% efficient, with no energy loss between the electric meter and the heated floor, it could draw 6 kilowatts per hour to run the system. At the current UK price of 20 pence per kilowatt hour to run the system, this would cost £1.20 per hour to heat the house using an electric underfloor system. Typical wet underfloor heating should output 100 watts per square metre, so it would take 60 square metres of wet underfloor heating to adequately heat this house. For the gas-fired boiler running a wet underfloor system, if we assume a new boiler is 90% efficient, and we have no energy loss between the boiler and the wet underfloor heating system, we can calculate the following. One unit of natural gas, or one kilowatt hour, 
costs four pence in the UK at present. One kilowatt hour of natural gas contains approximately 3,180 BTU. To achieve an output of 20,000 BTU for the underfloor heating, the boiler would need to output 22,222 BTU, allowing for 90% efficiency. This equals almost seven units of natural gas per hour at 4 pence per unit, costing 28 pence per hour. Compared to £1.20 per hour for the electric underfloor heating system, the gas system costs less than one quarter the price. You can see the challenge in moving away from natural gas. The difference in running cost is huge. And just to be clear, I am not sponsored by the natural gas industry or boiler manufacturers. I want to see an energy transition away from fossil fuels, but until electricity prices come down significantly, Competing against natural gas on cost won't be feasible. If you are thinking of fitting a new heating system to your home, take independent professional advice before you choose which system to go with. Always do a running cost calculation like the one above to make sure the long-term cost of heating your home doesn't come as a nasty shock.